Chapter 15 And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when any man came nigh to, to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand, and took him, and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass after forty years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pray and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For the Lord, thy servant vowed a vow when, while I abode at Jeshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent to Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. And there was a there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him, and the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place, and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger, and also an exile. Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return thou, and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And Ittai answered the king, and said, As the Lord liveth, and as my lord the king liveth, Surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. And Ittai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the book Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and shew me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. And the king said also unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimez thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will tarry in the plain in the wilderness, until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered, and he went barefoot, and all the people that was with him covered every man his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David had come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head, unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. 
But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then thou mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimez, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. We see here the beginning of the treachery of Absalom, David's beloved son and heir to the throne. It talks about when he has chariots and horses and 50 men to run in front of him, and you might not think that's particularly significant, but that only was something that kings did. And so when he would take the chariots and he would have the horsemen and he would have 50 men running in front of him, he was taking over the appearance of being the king from his father. Then when he would go into the gate and people would have bring causes that they wanted judged by the king, which was how David did it and how many of the rulers in that area do it even today, uh, he would say, well, gee whiz, it's too bad that there's nobody here that can judge us for you. Your cause is right. Oh, that I was a judge in Israel and I would judge right and everything would be wonderful. And he built up a, a, a feeling in the people that he was the rising star, David was the fading star, and that a lot of the people should support Absalom to be king. And then he decided he was going to go to Hebron. Then he told his father, I mean, he, you know, if you were going to go someplace as the crown prince, you had to talk with your father. You had to tell him why you weren't going to be in town. You were going to be missed as eat, from eating at his table. He'd want to know where you were. And so he told David that he was he vowed a vow and he was going to Hebron to offer sacrifices and everything was fine. But in reality, even with David's one of David's counselors, maybe David's chief counselor, who's supporting Absalom, Absalom is going to go to Hebron to be crowned king as a rebellion against his father. And when word reaches David that it has in fact happened, that the people have actually crowned him as their king, David does something entirely unexpected that he's never done in his entire life. He turns away and runs. He doesn't face his enemies. Now he faced every other enemy he had, but he didn't do it this time. And it's different because this is his son. He doesn't want to battle his son. He doesn't want to take a chance of killing his son. Um, he loves his son. He leaves ten of his concubines behind, and he takes off and heads south. And Zadok the priest and Abiathar the priest, he leaves and Jerusalem along with the Ark of the Covenant, which they are all ready to, to take. And he said, no, he said, uh, you stay there and you can send me word. And then he has another person, another counselor that he leaves behind, who's going to offer his services to... Absalom as a counselor and that he can learn about what's happening and then they can get word to Zadok the priest or Abiathar the priest who can then send word to David by either Zadok's son or uh, Abiathar's son and David will know what to do. But David seems to be in mourning here. Uh, he seems to be accepting this as though it's something from God rather than something he can fight and challenge. And it's like he's been winded, somebody's took, taken the heart out of him, and when your own son rebels against you, that's a really tough thing to take, and that's what David's going through right now. He doesn't know how it's going to end, but he has fears that it's going to end badly.